For the last few weeks, the focus of almost every tech video on the internet has been the RTX 3080 and or RTX 3090 launches from Nvidia. And yes, today's build video will use one of those cards. However, we are not going to be focusing specifically on the 3080 for this build. Instead, we're gonna be taking a look at a case that is extremely interesting from Asus ROG. Let's go. Need a Windows or Office key but don't want to pay retail? MMORC.com has all the best deals and a sweet discount for BPS Customs viewers. Just head over to the site link below and enter code BAN35 for 35% off your order total, meaning you could snag Windows 10 Home for under 10 bucks. Fill out your email and place your order and then click the extract code button at the top of the page. From there, it's as easy as heading to your Windows activation settings and inputting your shiny new key. For more information, head to MMORC.com or check out the links below. So this is the new ROG Z11 gaming case. That, that is actually the name. And it is quite possibly the largest mini ITX enclosure that I have ever worked with here on the channel and probably in the rest of my life too. It is quite large. We first saw this at CES this year, back in January. It released, I think last month and Asus sent over a sample for me to take a look at, and I haven't yet had a chance to put some hardware in it because I was trying to figure out what kind of hardware this case deserves. It is the same size, if not bigger, than some of the smaller full ATX cases on the market. And in order to justify its rather high cost and rather high size, it's going to need to both perform well and provide some additional features that you don't find on other mini ITX cases. Otherwise, you know, what's the point? So I guess for starters, you can talk about the design. Now, love it or hate it, I guess that is personal preference. But the thing that I do like about the way Asus has put this case together is that you can either orient it like this standing up, which is what we're gonna be doing today, or you could lay it down like something along the lines of what you might wanna see in a living room as part of an HTPC. Although this, as far as HTPC use goes, is a little oversized to fit in a lot of different racks. So I'm not entirely sure where Asus wants you to put this if you do put it in the horizontal orientation. Nevertheless, it does come with feet and nice rubber pads that you can use for that purpose if you want to. It also has a really nice complement of I.O. at the front, which is something that sometimes is lacking in some of the smaller cases, so you do get that. It has compatibility with full-size power supplies, which again, sometimes you don't get with many ITX cases. And it's got a good amount of room inside, so it could fit 240 millimeter AIOs, it could fit full-length graphics cards, it could fit air coolers if you want, up to 130 millimeters tall. It's got some compatibility that you don't find in smaller cases, which is certainly good. You just have to want this case, specifically this size case, when building with mini ITX hardware, which gives you other limitations like only two DIMM slots, uh, less storage capacity, and generally not as good overclocking support, which we might want to take advantage if we're going to be using a 240 millimeter AIO from Enermax on our 3700X processor from AMD. Now, this isn't the XT model, but the 3700X is still a great chip, eight cores and 16 threads, and I'm sure by now you guys are very familiar with this. And it's gonna really pair well with our RTX 3080. I think this combination of hardware with now a B550 motherboard is something that's gonna provide you an enormous value at 4K gaming, and also you're going to be able to save some costs versus the higher end stuff. So you wouldn't necessarily get a giant bump in frame rate at 4K with a more expensive processor or a more expensive motherboard. So this is again, another Asus product. This is the ROG Strix B550i Gaming. Now they have an X570 version of this as well, which is a little more fully featured, but for the purposes that we're going to be building today, this is going to be absolutely great. It is going to allow us to overclock our 3700X. It also looks really good. To that end, there is active cooling on this board for the VRMs. It's over the rear IO cover that is going to allow us potentially to clock up a little bit higher on our 3700X. So I think that performance wise, we should be in a really good space. 
but we do have to consider that there are other things that you need to put into a build like this to make sure that you're not going to be capping out on things like power. So we have a new power supply from Cooler Master. This is their V850 SFX Gold. 850 watts is not something that you often find in a power supply this small. And the cable length is going to make it so that because our case is so large, we're gonna need extensions. And we're gonna do that with these black and white cables from Nsource Customs. I think going with something like black and red in this case would probably be beneficial because I'm pretty sure there are some red accents in here somewhere. I haven't yet torn it down, but black and white is still gonna be good, still gonna be color neutral, and I think it's gonna tie in really well with our memory. Now this is a two by eight gigabyte kit of G-Skills Trident Z Royal DDR4-3200. I think ideally with this kind of a setup, you probably want 3600 speed memory, but Potentially we can overclock this and get there. And even if we can't, 3200 is still fine for our purposes today. It's not gonna be a huge difference in performance, although there is gonna be maybe a little bit. And then for storage, we're gonna be using two separate drives from Corsair, both MP510s, both 480 gigabytes. Now, when I asked Corsair to send me over an M.2 drive and I was hoping for a one terabyte, they said, well, we don't have any in stock. Here's two 480s instead. So. This is a little weird. I would generally recommend going with a one terabyte NVMe drive in a build like this, or maybe a two terabyte single drive. Instead, we have two 480 gigabyte drives. It's gonna be fine for our purposes. Again, I think that that's not gonna be an issue, but if you're building at home, probably go with the consolidated single drive with the higher capacity. That's probably just the smarter thing. And then I know we touched on this earlier, but our 3080 today is gonna to be from EVGA. This is the XC3 Ultra version. It is a two slot card, which is something that a lot of people are looking for because a lot of the newer graphics cards that are coming out are so enormous that they can't fit in some cases. Now, granted, we are working with a very large case here, so it really wouldn't be a problem either way, but still, for general use, a mini ITX build, you want a two slot card, and the XC3 Ultra will do that for you. And plus, it's still an RTX 3080 with absurd performance and honestly a pretty good value, especially considering the 20 series prices. All right, so I'm not really sure how this is going to go. I haven't yet taken this apart fully. I have to figure out where the clips and, and buttons and stuff are that, that allow me to pop off the panels. And then I have to see how to uh, orient everything in here. I might have to actually consult the instruction manual for a case, which is something that I don't often have to do, but let's hope that the end result gives us good thermals, good performance, and good aesthetics. And uh, there's only one, one way to find that out. So let's get to building.
Here is our Z11 build. And before we get into things like performance, which incidentally was very good, I wanted to talk about the experience of working with this case. Now, at this point in my PC building career, I don't even know how many systems I've built. It's the numbers in the hundreds, if not higher than that. And I ran into a few difficulties working inside of this case. And it's not really something that I expected going into it, given how large it is versus the size of the components that we're working with. But I talked to my Asus rep about this yesterday and we were chatting about a few things and then this project came up and he's like, oh, by the way, I wanted to tell you that our engineers, Asus's engineers, designed this case specifically for more advanced PC builders. They wanted to put as many features as they could into a small form factor chassis while also giving the opportunity to build a water-cooled system in here. So maybe that is why the case is a little bit larger than you would normally see for mini ITX components, but at the same time, doing that also presents some additional challenges. In order to give the space in the main chamber, they had to cut it elsewhere, which means that even though this case fits a full-size power supply and we used an SFX power supply, cable routing, cable management area down below is still very, very tight. So working in that space is a challenge. Also routing cables presented a couple of roadblocks for me. I kind of cut my hand one time trying to work around the graphics card at the bottom. And now maybe that's a matter of planning, you know, putting cables through first before installing the graphics card. And that's understandable, I guess. But I ran into it in other places too, where there are appropriate cutouts for routing everything that you need to but they are often either partially covered up or very hard to reach once you have some things installed and it becomes challenging working in such tight spaces. Now, for those of you small form factor enthusiasts who are maybe used to something like that, I guess you probably say, hey, Brian, you're you're making a mountain out of a molehill here. And, and you know, I guess maybe I am, but just in speaking with Asus, they conveyed that they knew this is a challenge to use. This is not a case that's made for beginners, which left me a little conflicted because I had already started to film and I know a lot of people on my channel are beginners and looking to figure out how to do their first build. And I will tell you guys, I will speak to you directly here. If you're a beginner and you're looking to put together your first PC and you wanna maybe get into a smaller build, this is not the case for you. This is a little bit too complicated for a first time or even a second or maybe third time builder to make a product that's gonna end up looking and performing well. There are a lot of things here that you do have to consider. The first is thermals. Now, I don't know if you guys can hear this. I'm gonna do my best in post to take out the drone of these fans, but this system is loud. And the reason that it's loud is because all the fans in here are running at pretty high speeds at all times. Now, you can definitely change fan curves and even make the fans run at a set speed if you want. But in order to keep thermals in check here, especially for the graphics card, the fans have to ramp up pretty significantly. Right now, the majority of the sound that I guess I'm having to edit out is coming from the GPU. The EVGA 3080 XC3 Ultra has a zero fan speed mode. It will stop the fans if there's no load on the GPU core and temperatures are reasonable. I never saw that happen with this build. It's probably because of the orientation and direction that the GPU is having to pull air from. It's pulling air from the front of the case, and it's honestly not that far away from this glass. A lot of cases that have orientation for GPUs like this will also have other areas where the GPU can pull from, and this unfortunately really does not. There are a couple of areas around back here that are quote unquote open for airflow. It's not nearly enough. The GPU when gaming was getting up into the mid eighties and as a result was clocking down to 1755 megahertz. And although that is still above spec for these cards, most of the time when you're gaming, you're seeing them run 1950 megahertz or so. And that obviously is gonna give you better performance. So in order to compensate for the higher temperatures, mid eighties is pretty toasty for these cards. The GPU was clocking down and that is unfortunate. It's gonna to lead to decreased performance overall. 
the CPU was actually fine, especially while gaming. It was running between 43, maybe 53 Celsius, somewhere in that 10 degree range, depending on the load. And I think that there, there is enough airflow back here coming from the radiator that allows the CPU to maintain a, a lower temperature and thus higher boost clocks, which is, which is really good, which is obviously what you want. But to keep that going, the fans on the AIO also are running a little bit faster than they normally would. So there, there's a situation in here where you have to balance what your acoustic expectations are versus what your thermal expectations are. If this is gonna be sitting on a desk next to you, it's gonna to be too loud unless you're wearing headphones all the time. I mean, I, even just sitting here right now, it's probably putting out like 50 decibels just by itself. And that is not really acceptable. So unless you're willing to accept significantly higher temperatures by manually dialing down your fan speeds, this is not going to be a great situation for you. Also the cable routing situation up top, especially for the IO that you're gonna have to run out the back, generally comes out the back of the case, is again, super, super tight. In order to get to it, you have to remove the back panel and manipulate your cables through this very, very small hole in the back of the case and then route them out and down. I, I don't have it set up now because it's not connected to anything, but when I was doing testing, Getting all the cables in here was such a pain that I just took off the back panel and ran them through there instead. So again, you are having to deal with very tight spaces and very little margin for error as far as things like cable routing. And if you have a lot of accessories plugged into the back of your motherboard, you might run into space issues here because there's not a whole lot of room up here for cables to come out. That whole area is blocked off on the top of the case by this blacked out part of the glass. So you don't see it. It's not gonna end up looking like a mess. But at the same time, like it's probably gonna take you a little while to arrange it so that it looks okay. Cause otherwise it could kind of be a disaster. With all that being said though, and some of the problems that I had out of the way, aesthetically, once this is all set up, I think this is a fantastic looking case. There's really nothing else like this on the market, especially with like the reverse orientation, the motherboard kind of suspended in the middle of everything, the GPU facing front and the glass on multiple sides. This is a pretty unique visual experience uh, for any builder. So I do commend Asus for that. Also, the performance of the system that we put in here is just off the charts. All my tests were run at 4K and ultra settings, and I didn't encounter any issues running any of my tests. And uh, the lowest performance that we got was exp as expected with Ghost Recon Wildlands, uh, which was 52.86 frames per second, but everything else was over 60. So Deus Ex Mankind Divided, 65.8, Far Cry New Dawn, 91, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 83, and Doom Eternal, I mean, it, that's the best optimized game out right now. And that was running 180 frames per second plus. So if you are looking for a really strong 4K gaming experience and a unique visual presentation, this kind of a build is certainly something that you should look at. But again, do keep in mind that you're gonna have problems with uh, acoustics. So that's it for this week's build project. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure to get subscribed if you're not already. What do you guys think of the Asus ROG Z11 case and our build that we put in it this week? Do you guys approve? Do you like the 3080-3700X combo? Do you think the case should just be scrapped entirely? Or do you think that it's definitely unique and can be iterated on in the future? Personally, I like when companies take risks. I like not having standard black boxes on my desk all the time. I think that this is a very interesting presentation. I think it's a very interesting idea with the motherboard kind of floating in the middle and the GPU at the front. I think that there are definite tweaks that can be made here to improve this for like a version two. Uh, and I hope that Asus does it. I hope that they don't just scrap this after, you know, one try. Um, I, then again, there are certain limitations here. Thermally, GPU is running too hot uh, and acoustically, things are just kind of a mess here. It's way too loud. So I hope that they see this and say, okay, we have some good and some bad and we can make this better because I do like this. And I, I think that even though it's non-standard as far as sizing goes for a mini ITX build, uh, it's interesting and I like interesting. So thank you so much for watching guys and I will see you next time.